Hello everybody and welcome back to Heroes of the Storm. My name is Winback and on today's A through Z playthrough, we are going to be playing Anubarak. Anubarak is one of the squishier main tanks and does require a bit of finesse, but it's good stuff, I promise. This is a YouTube video though, so feel free to like, comment, and subscribe your heart out. And if you like the video, want to support the channel, feel free to share on social media, your Twitters, your Facebooks, your Reddits, your whatevers. And that is it. Let's start the video. Team comps today are going to be Malthiel, White Man, Nubrak, Zarya, and Tychus versus... Oh, she's just going right into that tower for some energy, huh? Uh, versus Kira, Medic. <sighs> no, it's a little bit spooky. That's just... I can't do anything with that, man. Uh, Kira, Medic, Imperius, Avatar, and May. So, enemy team has quite a bit of frontline. But they also have to protect their medic quite a bit. So once we hit level 10, I am going to make the enemy team... Uh, I'm going to make their life a living hell. So Until then, we're just going to get killed by medic grenades over the gate. And everything's going to be really, really bad. But, uh, for those of you who need the build and nothing else, Anubarak's main tank build is going to be Nerubian armor. We've got Underking at 4... 7 will be either Subterranean Shield or Chitinous Plating. 10 will be uh, Cocoon. 13 will be Urticating Spines or Acid Drenched Mandibles. Uh, 16, either Epicenter or Debilitation. And then 20 will always be Rewind. This is the main tank build for this character, so that is how things are going to go. Um, actually, Trader King at 20, I think, could be good as well. That was a recent change to New Iraq, so I'm not, I haven't played a whole lot around that 20 yet. Um, we can certainly talk about it. So if you're not familiar with the New Barak's abilities, they are mostly CC, a little bit of defense, and then some weird utility stuff. Being that a New Barak does not have a whole lot of health, uh, Blizzard saw fit to give him a shield that is also going to give him a lot of spell armor. Now, if you're playing into characters that do a lot of auto attack damage, things are not going to be super smooth for a Nubarak because his teeny health bar and his shield won't do much. Man, we are getting crushed by this early medic, except for the fact that, okay, well, we're not actually going to kill her. We may actually lose our white main. It's a little bit spooky, a little bit worried about where we're positioned right now, even though... Okay, yeah, no, it's fine. This is going to be a weird game, I promise you. But um, we do need to scale into it. Now, the uh, the Q ability for Anubarak is called Impale. It's very simple, it's a straight line skill shot. It does have a little bit of wind up to it, or travel time, sorry, the missile is slow. But if anybody's hit with that skill shot, they're going to get knocked up and stunned for one whole second. Just one, just one, that's it. But the skill shot's really easy to land from point blank, and typically you can hit a lot of people who aren't paying attention because it does travel quite a ways. Your W is called Hardened Carapace. This is going to give us a shield that absorbs 414 damage for three seconds, and on top of that, it is going to give you spell armor in the amount of 40. Uh, so you're going to reduce spell damage by 40% whenever you have your W shield activated. Your E is your main form of engage with Anubarak, and that is called the Burrow Charge. It is a very, very, very long range dive ability. Uh, and while Anubarak is under the ground using this ability, he is completely unstoppable. So he used to be completely invulnerable, I think, and they had to change it because that was fucking busted. Now, that uh, Burrow Charge is going to be the main way that we get onto the Medic and is going to be up to our team to also get onto the Medic so that we can kill the rest of their team. Because if Medic's alive, no one dies, everything's bad, you get how it goes. Now, Anubarak's trait is the weird utility part of his kit. Uh, so every time that Anubarak casts an ability, he's going to spawn a beetle. The beetles push lanes, they live for 8 seconds, and they deal a relatively small amount of damage. Uh, if you are in the middle of a team fight, though, they will attack heroes. They don't prioritize anything. Uh, I believe they used to prioritize heroes. And then Blizzard took that out because they were killing people real fast. Um, nowadays, with the beetle build and the burning beetles, you can still kill people. 
with beetles. It's just a little bit harder and you have to know what you're doing in order to do it. It's not just like jump in, let beetles kill people. Oh my god, Tyke is dead on the wrong side of the map. Looks like White Mane is dead too. And now we need to get away. Our health bar is full, but our teammates' health bars are not. And there is nothing I can do to get you out of there, Zarya. So you're just going to have to take one for the team. Is this man actually going to live just here? Holy ass, he did it. He actually did it. That legend. So... Only uh, two of us make it out of that team fight, and the enemy team looks ready to take the objective, finally. Unfortunate, because now Avatar's going to continue to soak, while we need to de-channel, and the enemy team's already a full level up on us. So unless we start killing people very soon, we're going to have a really hard time coming back and experience. Yikes. Uh, what I was mentioning about the trait, though, with the beetles, they do uh, block a fair number of skill shots, so they're kind of like a skill shot shield... Uh, that only Anubarak has, but they do require you to use abilities to make them. More often than not, they're not going to push very hard either. They're kind of going to make... Ah, okay, well, I can't get anybody to stop the Imperius from stopping me from stopping the channel, so... Great. Uh, typically, though, the Beatles, they'll push harder with the wave, but they're not going to, you know, create this ocean of minions that just win the game. That's, that's not what their purpose is. It feels like nowadays their purpose is to block skill shots. I think I think that's their main functionality with this character, sadly, um, when they used to be all about dealing damage and just crushing things. That's okay, though, because they're still useful. Uh, now, the alt that we're going to pick up with Anubarak in tank mode is going to be the Cocoon. Cocoon is one of the most OP CC abilities in the entire game. Uh, cocoon is going to be a point-and-click ability that you put on a single target, which is going to cocoon them for, what is it, eight seconds, I think it is? Seven seconds. So it's seven full seconds of no longer in the game on a point-and-click whatever, unless the enemy team attacks the cocoon and reduces its health. So you can reduce the time by reducing the health of the cocoon, but at the same time, if they don't do that, you've taken someone effectively out of an entire team fight. Uh, which is what Anubarak is going to do. Dodged your shit, Kira. That's how we do it. If you have an unstoppable, you dodge Kira's whip every single time. And you can put her in some bad positions. Please don't get hit by the blizzard. He's dead. There's nothing that we can do. White Mane might live, but Tychus, there's no way. Okay, and then the Avatar clone just... Uh, no fucks given. Not that there should be, because it's a clone, but whatever. Kira also blowing her ult. Nobody can kill the White Mane, though, because she's light on her feet that is oh, that's a medevac down to the bottom boss we don't have 10 yet but we'll have it by the time that we make it to the boss so we need to get there kill them and try to start turning the game around we're down a building they are not shit's gonna hurt soon with the avatar on their team so ooh, they have begun it i have seen them Avatar doesn't know that he needs to put mines in the bush where I am seated, and everybody on my team is showing on the wave, telling the enemy team where we are. Oh, big kill on the Kira right off the bat. We've got Morales in the cocoon. They have to stop it. Okay, don't hit the boss. You gotta hit the people. If you kill the people, then we win and we get the boss. Stop hitting the boss. Okay, well, I guess we're gonna hit the boss. We got making decisions is really hard in a boss pit for people. That's just... It's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's gonna be okay. Zari is dead to the boss stun and the damage from the enemy team. I'm still just on the medic trying to kill... Thank God, she's dead. Alright. This means that this should be doable. With a tank and a healer versus a tank and an abathur, there's really no concerns. Except they're gonna die and we're gonna get the boss and I'm gonna leave. I don't know why Malthiel's AFK in the base right now. Maybe he had to poop. Who knows. Um, anyway... So the, uh, the talents that are going to make the most sense in this build are a little bit of everything. Um, how do I focus on which talents are most important? So there's a couple tiers that you are going to need to make the decision uh, on your own in your game that you need more. Uh, and typically those are going to be your aggressive talent tiers. So... Level 1, Nerubian Armor is just the talent that you want to take, period, if you're main tanking with Anubarak. Even if the enemy team's main damage is um, auto attacks, 
you probably shouldn't have drafted a Nubrak, but you still want to take uh, Nerubian Armor because 30 Globes on Regen Master for 500 extra health is shitty. Uh, not only is it very difficult, Omalthiel's a bot. That makes much more sense now. I get it. I get it. Trying to peel for the white main, diving backwards. I hate using Burrow Charge this way, but May is gonna... Oh, that Ice Wall on the very tip. She's gonna blizzard two people as well. The clone is finally down, so we might actually have an opportunity to go in here. We still have a bot. Things are getting spooky. Medic is in the cocoon. Can we kill her out of it? She's got the medevac. Everybody kill it, please, now. Thank God. All right, Medic should die. Please? Yes, she's out. She does... Her cheeky little spray death, and we've won the team fight. Without the medic, the enemy team does not stand a chance because there is way too much melee and no range damage on their team. Now, Imperius thinks that he can just fight people, and that is not true. Still got to keep the uh, little boogers off the camp, but the good news is that they aggroed the beetles. So if you just put out a beetle, you do not have to tank those minions. Mmm! Tychus still way up front. Uh, I'm gonna be hit by the ice wall and the, the white main is pretty far back. It doesn't look like this is gonna be a huge problem for us though. Again, too much melee on the enemy team. Even though I can't go over there, I have complete faith in my team to kill those guys. Even with the bot, look at that. There he is, made it back into the game. Now you're, um, again, uh, don't take regen master. 30 globes is way too much um, and Unless you're on a map where globes are just very apparent, or you have an Alex Straza providing you with globes all the time, this talent is really bad. Because being globe efficient uh, for 30 globes on a Nubarak is not easy. Especially on maps that are big like this, or Warhead, or Cursed Hollow. I mean, you're just fucked on the globe collection. Uh, maybe you take it on Tomb of the Spider Queen? I could see it there. But then... Oh my god, that expulsion zone, absolutely nasty. Can we kill the medevac? Doesn't look like it. She is going to get out, and the Abathur clone uh, is going to kill so many people. I don't know why the white main is on the bottom side of the map. We really needed our healer to be with the, you know, collection of the team, and the offlane are doing their own thing in the offlane. Poor decisions, quick mac to quit match decisions can't win them all oh well uh we got a building i guess we got one singular building it's good hmm. anyway um so level one talent really it's just always going to be in rubian armor um mostly uh at four we're taking under king under king is going to be the strongest ability at this tier when you're playing a main tank in uberak bed of varbs is fine in certain situations, but it's more niche, I think. And Under King is just going to let you go farther, deal more damage on your dive target, which is Medic in this case. I mean, yeah. Uh, and we want her to die fast, so we want to do more burst damage, we want to be able to hit her more often, and Under King just makes sense. Considering that Anubarak is a dive tank, you want to have the abilities that let you dive better. Now, at 7, we did pick up Chitinous Plating instead of Subterranean Shield, because... Chitinous Plating is going to, um, it's going to reduce the cooldown of our W. And with the amount of times that the enemy team uh, can do damage to us while the shield is up, that means that we are actually going to be able to have a lot of shield power a lot more often. That is a situation where it is more intuitive to cocoon the not medic in order to kill the medic because it was just the two of them. Using your cocoon with the new brack is super important, and knowing which targets to cocoon and how is going to make things a lot easier uh, with winning with this character. So, can we finish off the May? It looks like Malthiel may be able to get her. Going to Unstoppable through the Blizzard. Is she actually she's gonna live? She lives. Nothing I can do about that. All my abilities are on cooldown. That kind of sucks. Uh, but Chitinous Plating uh, at 7, the reason that this is going to reduce the cooldown so often is because May does a lot of uh, tick damage, um, Imperius does a lot of tick damage, even the Bleed off of Kira doing a lot of tick damage, so all of those things are going to damage Nubarak and their abilities, but they're also not going to kill the shield. So because of that, we are going to get the shield cooldown... Um, reduced by three seconds basically every time that we use it 
because of that that ticking damage because it happens so fast but it's so small and yes now subterranean shield is still very good obviously in other situations you'd still want that to be shielded when you're diving in but in this particular circumstance it just made more sense to take chitinous plating uh, there's also a full w build for a new rack that you can take which is still very good um, but again I'm just kind of building for what makes sense now the level uh, 13 talent again it's gonna be another up to you tier um, you gotta make do with what the enemy team is working with and then build around that because the medic is my number one target I want to make sure that I can do the most damage to her the fastest. Not going to make it out of there, buddies, and the way that you're stunned is going to mean that my acid-drenched mandibles are going to kill you. Uh, so acid-drenched mandibles are basically an executioner for a tank. Uh, we are going to deal 70% more basic attack damage to heroes that are slowed, rooted, or stunned. And considering that we stun people quite a bit with this character, uh, it is very easy to proc that all on our own. So Medic, when we dive in with our E and Stunner, it's extra damage on our autos. Or if we hit her with a Q, extra damage on our autos. And let's see, how long does that last? It's three seconds. So anytime that you hit a character with any of those uh, status debuffs, it's going to hurt. And Medic specifically is just not going to have a good time. Not at all. So... That was the reason that we picked that damage talent up, or you'll take Urticating Spines. We could take that as well because of the cooldown that we've got on Chitinous Plating at 7, but, again, up to you. Do what you want to do. I think and Acid Drenched Mandibles is better for what we've got, but, you know, niche, uh, no, uh, Situational Tier. That's the term, Situational Talent Tier. 16, we've taken Epicenter. Epicenter is going to increase the impact radius of our burrow charge medic getting out of the cocoon just in time it looks like we're probably gonna die here this team fight is not going our way everybody's super low health the clone isn't even dead yet and they broke that cocoon so fast there was nothing our team could do to stop it Malthiel is trying to be cheeky and get out the same way he did earlier but it didn't happen this time they were ready for that move Good news is the boss is still pushing, so it's not a complete wash, but uh, the enemy team does have 20, so we're probably just going to have to eat this objective while we soak that final level. The, um, the, the epicenter talent, though, at 16, what this is going to do is reduce the cooldown of burrow charge by one second for each hero hit, and then the impact radius is going to increase by 60%. So that means that we can hit more heroes, with our burrow charge, meaning that we can actually use it to get out of combat if we need it a lot sooner, um, because we're also reducing the cooldown. So when you dive in, now you've given yourself a little bit of an escape window as long as you don't die immediately, which is also good uh, that we have the, the shielding up so often. So anytime that Kira latches onto me with that lasso, I'm just going to eat immediately out or take her into... Uh, a very bad position. Yeah. Same thing with Joe. I mean, if you hit your D while Kira's swinging on you, or if you... Um, God, there's any number of things. If you go unstoppable with whoever you're playing while Kira is spinning on you, she's going to drop off wherever she is, and then if that is in the middle of your team, you've just uh, airdropped a perfectly easy kill on a target without an escape. So, good stuff. Now, the uh, 20 talent is just around the corner, and it is called Rewind. It is the most broken general, or what's the word? No, it's not general. It's, um, can't think of it. It'll come to me. Generic talent. Nailed it. It's the most broken generic talent in the entire game. Rewind is just going to reset all of your cooldowns as soon as you hit the button. And it's on a 60 second cooldown. So basically that means that Anubarak suddenly has a whopping three to four seconds of CC on a single character all by himself. That medevac isn't going to save you, my friend. We've got Imperius cocooned inside, and he's not getting out. 
That shield blew through as well while he was cocooned, so he didn't get any value out of the tankiness from there. We've got to go push all of our lanes out with the objective pushing, but with the amount of people dead on the enemy team, I'm not super concerned about losing this game. All we need to do is win one, maybe two more big team fights, get a big push going, and then game's over. And considering how easy for us it is to win team fights because of the cocoon and the amount of damage that we can put down on a medic who is, um, can we do this? Hello? Hello, boss? People? This is, all right, it's fine. Boss kills that fort and potentially gets the keep if we push with it, but, uh, you know, whatever. We'll get the good camp as a backup. I guess that's fine, too. The null camp is pretty busted, but it should just cancel out on the uh, enemy team's null camp, which is a little bit sad. Oh, now we want to do the boss. I see. I see. So the enemy team has their medevac up. They know that we are doing the boss, so they could potentially just fly in here, which feels like they will, or at least run at us. You know that they're doing it. We're anchoring the bush. We're going to try to keep them out. We've got beetles to demount. There's only two of them at the moment. We're caught in the ice wall. That boss stun is going to hit nothing. Thank God. And the medic is hiding in the back. I've got to get that cocoon on her as soon as possible. Kira's going to die to the Malthiel ult, thank God. And so is Mei on the backside. Can Imperius just going to miss his entire ult? Now we can take him down. So, okay, after White Mane dies, right? We're not also going to lose Zarya, right? Okay, good. Perfect. Except, you know, not actually perfect, more like a solid A minus. Oh, we can take the boss, we can take the fort, we can take the objective, probably win the game um, after that sequence of events happens, but all of our lanes are pushed right now, so we do need to deal with that. I don't know why people pick that Malthiel talent, the death carpet thing, it's just, it seems really bad compared to the uh, bring yourself back to life talent immediately, so preferences, I guess, it just doesn't seem worth it. Anyway, uh, looks like Tychus is over here trying to get the objective channeled, no one wanted to go with him, Malthiel pushing the lanes out, that's totally fine I suppose, but at least one other person should have traveled over there with him. I guess that also could have been my job, so shame on me, but uh, whatever. Boss got the building, just like I said, and that is it's going to spell curtains for the enemy team very soon. Alterac games are so long and drawn out, it's fucking nuts, man. Uh, but again, if you've missed the the whole rewind conversation, um, ooh, ice wall on two people. We need to get in there before they all die. Can we cocoon the medic in time? Doesn't look like it. And now things are getting a little bit spooky. Big ult from White Main though to trap people inside. Malthiel is going to land the last rites. That clone from the enemy team is going to get baited on attacking the Tychus who got a shitload of health back from that's the stuff and now we just keep on diving and we can end this game that was the epicenter uh, at 16 knocking both of those characters up even though they were super far away no medevac for you medic Imperius looks like he's gonna live with the avatar hat but not a whole lot that we care about there he can't push waves he can't stop the objective we're going to win the game one way or the other all right, I think we should probably go do the camp, but Imperius just, you know, launched forward to his death, so that's just as easy. Uh, please go do the camp. The camp pushing with the objective will end the game. That's a lot of pings from yours truly, trying to get the camp started. White Mane finally getting on the page, but isn't going to make it there fast enough to tag the camp before the objective. No one's going to get the boss either. The wave is pushing in bottom against us, but since we have the top and the mid waves pushing, the objectives here take buildings, take armor off the core, and they should be winning that game. I don't know why there's people in the bottom. I, I really don't know. That is an ice wall on a Tychus. He's going to lose some armor coming out of that and hopefully does not get hit by the blizzard. Thank God. May didn't have it timed right. Luckily. Malthiel still in the bottom lane, not super sure why. Huge stun from Kira hitting three people, but no follow-up from the enemy team. We're going to knock her out with the expulsion zone and the burrow charge, and we 
can see that cocoon making sure that May dies. There's the last rites to kill her off yet. Oh my god. The the cheat death she has on level 20 saved her for a couple more seconds, but uh, Malthiel was ready. The minions should be enough, coupled with the objective to kill the, the core here. I just want to make sure that this Malthiel doesn't die while this is all happening. Alright, good. I actually just wanted to kill the medic one more time because that player was being a shitter in the game before this one and in this game, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's good. Competitive fun, competitive integrity, and trash talking between players is totally acceptable. Just don't be a toxic shit about it. Is that me? Oh my god, zero deaths with no good stats. I'll take it. I'll take it. I am the biggest, baddest beetle around, and that is how we do it. So, the build, again, in case you need it, Nerubian Armor at 1, 4 is going to be under 494 in the Rhythm Stacks. Damn, they just stood there and ate damage. That's nuts. Uh, Nerubian Armor, Under King, Chitinous Plating, Cocoon, Acid Drenched Mandibles, Epicenter, and Rewind. Now, your, again, your situational tiers are going to be your 13 and your 7, but everything else in this build is pretty static. So, Under, or er, Rewind most of the time. Under King and Epicenter work too well together not to pick together, so take that stuff, make it happen. Um, also, debilitation though at 16, really good for reducing damage on people that you hit with your burrow charge, so it could be a good trade sometimes. But that is going to be it for me. We will be back tomorrow with our Tannis, everyone's favorite Protoss Bruiser, and That'll take us one step closer to getting through the A's. So that's it for me. Thanks so much for hanging out. GG's. Peace out.